All right, so AMD has just announced Zen 3. We've got the 5900X, 5800X, and 5600X. We expect the non-X counterparts of some of those chips will be announced later on. Typically, the better versions of the products are launched up front, and then the cheaper versions roll out later because they know more people will probably be interested in those cheaper variants. So the Ryzen 9 5900X, which is a part of the Zen 3 family, uh, comes in at 12 cores, 24 threads. We've got a boost frequency of 4.8 gigahertz, which is pretty freaking high for a Ryzen-based CPU. Uh, and then a TDP of 105 watts, price $549. Next up, Ryzen 7 5800X, eight core, 16 threads, 4.7 gigahertz boost, same TDP, 105 watts, and price, 449 USD. And I've got to say, at around this point, I started losing that sense of enthusiasm I had for this launch because 449 bucks for uh, an X800 series Zen CPU is, um, it's it's a little high. It's a yeah. It's, it's a little high. We'll, we'll just leave it there for now. And then Ryzen 5 5600X, the one I imagine more of you are interested in. Uh, six cores, 12 threads, 4.6 gigahertz boost, which is still decent for out of the box boost frequencies. A 65 watt TDP, which is just a testament to how efficient these chips are. And then a 299 USD price tag. Again, 300 bucks for a six core Ryzen variant is, it's a little steep, yeah. Activating Windows is as simple as hopping on over to SCD Key's VIP site where you can purchase an OEM Pro key for a little over 10 US dollars. Use a secure payment method like PayPal, receive your key in a matter of seconds, and activate your OS here to remove that annoying watermark. Click the link below to get started and use my offer code GSL for a sweet discount. Now, one of the reasons why I think AMD has priced things a bit higher than some have come to expect because AMD has traditionally been the better value uh, is because Zen 3, at least from what AMD has shown us, is yielding a massive IPC improvement. Uh, and, and that comes down to a lot of different things architecturally that they've tweaked. I won't go into those in this video. This isn't a, a crash course video, so to speak. Uh, more or less an announcement of the announcement, but I, I kind of want to consolidate all this for you uh, and also speculate a bit. Now it does get a bit dicey here because obviously we're just going off of AMD's word, but if this is anything like previous launches from AMD, um, I expect that the numbers they're showing us aren't far from the real values. Granted, the way that by which they tested the 5900X uh, and the 10900K, that's subject to a bit of debate, was AMD comparing the two chips at the same frequency? Were they, were they clocking the 10900K to just five gigahertz and then maybe overclocking the 5900X to five gigahertz? Or were they just both running at stock out of the box? Was MCE disabled on the Intel side of things? Uh, there are many different ways you could approach that. Uh, and, and I'm not saying that any, any particular way is the correct way to do it, especially if you're AMD and you only have one obvious competitor in the desktop CPU space. But uh, yeah, this, this is why you can't just take these numbers at face value, always wait for those independent reviews. That said, they are touting a roughly 28 to 30% gaming uplift on average over Zen 2, which is difficult for me to fathom because I, I mean, <laughs> how, like that generational leap, if, if we're looking at historical leaps, right, from, from Ryzen, Zen to Zen plus, wasn't substantial. I mean, there were tweaks with the memory profiles XMP that helped the chip, but it was more so of like a, a voltage management, overclocking potential type refresh, so to speak. Then we have Zen 2. Zen 2 was an obvious bump over Zen Plus, but the, the gains were, I don't want to say marginal, but they were nowhere near as large as what AMD's touting here. 28% in gaming. And they kept stressing the prioritization of single threaded performance, which is something that we have been giving Intel credit for as of late. Actually, we've been giving Intel credit for that for, for several, several years. Problem is Intel isn't really doing much else uh, with their fabs because they're having so many problems with the yields, uh, with the machines that are supposed to be etching these dies. Uh, it just, there's a lot that goes on. We have a video talking about why Intel is having problems. But uh, th this, is, this is a pretty substantial number to, to publicize because if it doesn't come anywhere close to this, they're gonna be in a world of trouble. And I, I know AMD knows this, so why else would they put this number out if they weren't confident in it. And they were testing these games at 1080p, mind you, at least I said that at one point in the live stream, uh, and 1080p is, is what we would recommend you test CPUs at, uh, because that will put more of a load on the CPU when you have a higher frame rate due to the lower resolution, that CPU will naturally become more and more of a bottleneck. But I think the pricing argument here is, is, is justifiable, especially when we've come to expect a certain price 
for a certain SKU, a certain family of CPUs, so to speak, the Ryzen 5 series has generally been in the $200 range, but seeing the 5600X priced at $300, I don't think that's a, I don't think it's a huge blow. Some people in the, on, on Twitter were making this, I think a bigger deal than they needed to. Uh, initially, yeah, seeing a Ryzen 5 price at 300 bucks is a bit disappointing, but remember this is the X series SKU and we expect that they will release at some point in the near future a 5600 non-X counterpart. Those are traditionally the better buys. They're also traditionally a bit more efficient. They don't clock nearly as high, uh, but if the IPC gains are, are, are anywhere near what AMD is touting, uh, I don't think it's gonna be a huge blow to the average gamer. Now, on the other side of that, there's obviously the, the problem with competition. As AMD begins to, to innovate more and more, and they, they certainly have in the past four or five years, um, you will notice the lack of competition from Team Blue. What that means is that AMD is no longer forced or, or, or compelled, so to speak, to price these CPUs aggressively. I still think that 299 for a 5600X is decent given what we've come to expect from Intel, but had Intel released something around this time that was a direct competitor, maybe six cores, 12 threads, a similar boost frequency, similar IPC at 300 bucks, the same price maybe they're releasing the uh, 5600X now, maybe AMD would have released that 5600X at 249, which would have been much more conventional for a Ryzen 5 CPU, historically speaking. Uh, so I, I'm not necessarily blaming AMD for the, the pricing structure here. And, and heck, if we come anywhere close to that 28% IPC uplift or 28% uh, gaming performance bump on average, some games obviously less, some games much more than that, um, I, I think it's a worthy trade-off. I think that a majority of people will opt for the non-X SKUs anyway, uh, and that will certainly bring prices down by at least 50 bucks or so. And also keep in mind, there will be price reductions for older Zen chips as well, right around the corner. So uh, you might find a Zen 2, let's say 3,600, instead of 200 bucks, you might find these for 120, 130, 150 bucks even. Uh, and those at those prices are, are incredible deals. Um, I, I would struggle at that point to recommend the brand new chip with the, the 20 to 30 percent gaming uplift uh, over a chip that costs half as much and you're only seeing what a 20 30 percent reduction uh in frame rates on average and that again is very game dependent um i think that that's a big case for zen 2 once those prices drop as well and that's that's normal right it, we've we've come to expect things like that uh, from from amd and from nvidia and even from intel at times although recently i mean even if you wanted to buy a 9900k those are still going for around msrp which kind of sucks but that speaks to how little of those chips are in supply. Now, speaking of supply, it's gonna be a bit dicey. I don't think that we'll see the same supply shortages up front that we saw from uh, NVIDIA. We're still experiencing the, that issue from NVIDIA, especially with respect to the 30, uh, 3080 uh, and potentially even the 3090, although the 3080 is a much more attainable card, which is why uh, that one seems to be suppressed even more. Uh, but uh, CPUs traditionally aren't hit as bad unless there's a serious supply shortage, as is the case with Intel. Uh, and historically with AMD, it's it's usually been like the 38 to 3900 X, um, or the, I should say the, uh, the X8 or X9 uh, SKUs from AMD that have kind of suffered a bit up front. But uh, I imagine the next month or two, these will be rather uh, plentiful in the market. So uh, don't stress too much about the inventory issues with AMD. I mean, TSMC has been on top of things uh, for, for several, several years, and I highly doubt AMD is willing to break with that tradition. Uh, so I'm super excited. I don't necessarily think that Intel is toast yet, but Intel delaying what they're delaying taking years to do anything radical with their fabs uh, is is going to, it's gonna hurt. It's gonna hurt Intel, uh, maybe not to the extent that some people might hope, uh, but uh, I, I'm personally hoping for Intel to release something that does directly compete, both on a performance level and a price level with Zen 3. And right now Zen 3 is looking mighty fine. Let me guys know in the comments what you guys think about the, uh, the launch and what you might consider upgrading to. We also need to talk about board compatibility, chipset compatibility, all that will come up in a, in a different video. But uh, right now, announcement of the announcement. Um, it's easy to be hyped up, but uh, manage those expectations. Uh, again, take what the companies are saying with grains of salt, massive grains of salt at times, and uh, stay tuned for those independent reviews. Thank you guys for watching. Consider subscribing, like the video, and I'll catch you in the next one. My name's Greg. Thanks for learning with me.